What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18 RC or release candidates for beta testers. Now along with this iOS release, we also got the release candidate build for iPadOS 18, watchOS 11, macOS Sequoia, tvOS 18, and visionOS 2. And this update came in at just under seven gigabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is a typical size when you go from a beta to an RC or a final release or vice versa. So that is a big size. It will take a while to download, but that's what we have here. Now let's go ahead and check out the build number for iOS 18 and our settings in general about. It is 22A3354. So this should be the same build number as the official release when that launches next week. And we'll talk more about that near the end of this video. But unless we get an RC2, this will be the final build of 18.0. And then going back to the modem firmware, that remains the same yet again. It's still at 2.16. 0.06 on the iPhone 15 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18 RC? So first off, I wanna give a quick shout out to everybody who joined the live stream earlier. So I did do a live stream for the iPhone 16 event. So shout out to the live stream gang. And anytime Apple does an iPhone event, we always get the RC build afterwards. So usually we get to see some new features added that were announced alongside the new iPhones. And that appears to be exactly what happened this time around as well, because we got a really big change in the camera application, specifically under the video section. So I'm going to start playing a video and you guys tell me if you see something new here. Notice it? Well, it's this right here. You can now pause video recordings, and this does not require the iPhone 16. I'm on the iPhone 15 here, and if you pause that, you can see what it looks like. We also have a little you know, badge up here that says paused, and you can see that behind the number right there, the length that you are into the video, it is kind of like blinking. It's kind of flashing that gray color. And even while it's paused, you can turn flash on. So maybe if you realized a shot was too dark and you wanted to pause it and then turn flash on, you can now do that. And if you want to resume, or if you could take a screenshot as well, and you could adjust all of your settings here as well, including the zoom. So if you want to resume, you just press right here and it will resume that video and you can carry on. Now, when you do this and you stop, if we go into our video, you can see that if we go to the 11 second mark, you're not gonna see like a jump or anything like that. It basically just perfectly stitches together the video. Now, if something is moving, obviously you'll be able to tell a difference, but that is pretty cool. And if you swipe up, there's no indication that it was ever paused or anything like that. There's no badge for that. And here's another example I'll do. So I'll be going side to side and let's just say I pause it when I'm over here and then I resume when I'm over here. Here's what that will look like in a video. You can see that you will see a little bit of a jump here. So there we go. You can see there is a little bit of a jump, obviously, you know, if you move the position, but you can see it does still work properly. Now I know Android's had this forever. iPhone has been needing this forever and it's finally here, but that's not all. We also have another change in the camera. So now if you go to shoot in 4K 60, for example, let's just shoot a quick video in 4K 60. Now, what if we did not mean to shoot that in 60 FPS, or for some reason, we just want to change a certain part of that video to 30 FPS? Well, before iOS 18, that was not possible. But now, if you go into the edit view, you'll notice that we have a new icon up in the top right hand corner. And when you tap on that, you can change the playback speed. And you could also change this on a per clip basis. So for example, we have 60 FPS. So if you want to play this at 30 FPS, you can select that. And now you can choose what part of the video you want to be in 30 FPS as opposed to 60. So it's similar to what we saw with slow mode before, but now you can do this with regular videos without having to go into a special mode or anything. It's very awesome. And this will be extremely helpful when the new iPhone 16 comes out, which can shoot in 120. FPS and you can go in here and tweak your settings as well for this feature. So that is pretty awesome. And that is new in iOS 18. Oh, and you can see that you can also have an undo slow-mo edit button. So if you tap on the three dots, you'll now see the undo slow-mo edit and redo if you undo it. We also have a small change to the flash up here. So if you want to quickly adjust your flash settings, you can now tap and hold on that menu and it will prompt you to turn on, off, or set your flash to auto before you had to tap on that to be able to do anything. Actually, before 
or even if you tapped on it, it would just turn it on or off. You had to actually go down here to get those settings for flash. But now it's built in to the top flash button. You just have to haptic press on that or just long press on it and it will give you the options. Now we also get the new watch faces with this update. So you do have to have an Apple Watch running watchOS 11 RC, but you can see that we do also have new watch faces here, the ones that were just announced. Now, as far as Apple intelligence goes, we did not get any new Apple intelligence features for iOS 18.0. So I know a lot of people are wondering if Apple is going to launch any AI features ahead of you know 18.1 but that is not the case we do not have any apple intelligence in 18.0 those will all be coming all those features will be coming in 18.1 next month now also the control center seems a lot better and more fluid here in the rc build especially when switching pages i had some stutter before but that appears to be better also when you move these icons now they move so much more smoothly you can see that i'm not having near as many hiccups as i had before on these iOS 18 builds. It's very smooth and you can absolutely tell it's an RC now. And I think that the control center is gonna be one of the best features that people really love with iOS 18 once they see how robust you can make this. Like if you go in here and add control, you have so many different controls you can add to the control center now in iOS 18, including shortcuts and you can have multiple pages. You know, the music is separated, your home section is separated, and then your connectivity section is separated. It's really well done and I think everybody is going to love this change to the control center now for the photos application I don't know if the same can be said because photos is gonna take some getting used to if you've not used iOS 18 the betas you will have some figuring out to do with the photos application but I think the main key here is to go all the way down to the bottom and go to customize and reorder and just select the albums or you know the uh, collections I guess that you want to actually see on your main view and move them around like if you don't want to see certain things at all just unselect it but if you want to move something around just move it around like for example if I don't even want to see recent days I can just remove that if I don't want to see albums until after trips I can move that and everything updates in real time so once you realize how customizable photos is I think that you will kind of change your mind after your first impressions are probably going to be negative now if you tap on search you also get a much improved search here so you can search your recently viewed you get some prompts here and you could also search for very advanced things that you couldn't search for before. Like for instance, if I search for cat on a chair, it will show me cat on a chair. Whereas before in iOS 17, it wouldn't show anything. And then of course, another one of the big changes that a lot of people are going to love is the ability to have dark mode icons. So if you haptic press on your home screen and then go to customize up here, you can now choose between light and dark mode. So you can see, I don't know how we lived with light mode icons for so long after seeing how good the dark mode icons are. So you can see what those look like and you can also tint these to be whatever color you would like which is pretty neat and a big, big fan of that feature. Now, if you're wondering about all of the iOS 18 features, I will have a separate video coming on that next week. Once iOS 18 gets released to the public, I will show every single detail, every single feature, every single change included with iOS 18. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. It's an annual tradition video here on the channel. Anyways, as far as the release notes go for iOS 18 RC, there's actually nothing changed in the release notes from from beta 8 so everything that was in beta 8 is here in RC as well and that includes the issues that were outstanding now as far as the overall performance goes iOS 18 RC feels fantastic I mean ever since I first unlocked the phone I could tell that it was a little bit quicker than betas 7 and 8 which both were kind of the same in terms of performance for me so I would expect to see a minor boost in battery life if you're on iOS 18 beta 8 or even previously uh, especially if you're on a previous beta you will see a nice increase so let's see what the Geekbench scores tell you so we scored a 2736 on the single core and a 6721 on the multi-core and my phone is really hot like going into this so the scores are not the best you can see it compared to previous ones but that's expected when we have an RC release and a lot of stuff going on in the background but so far for me just real world usage it does feel very nice and smooth now as far as the battery life goes I don't know that battery life is going to improve with the RC build as opposed to beta 7 and beta 8 I think it's probably going to be in line with what we saw with beta 8 especially since the release notes are the same you know that's not really 
telling everything, but I would just assume that battery life will be very similar to what we saw with beta 8 and we might see improvements come with like subsequent updates like 18.1 and 18.2 for example. Now for those wondering if you should update to iOS 18 RC or if you should just wait until the final release next week, I would say that that's all personal preference. Like if you want to turn off beta updates, you can just go into your settings, general software updates, and then go into beta updates and then just simply turn this off instead of being on a public or developer beta. And then you will not get beta updates anymore. You will only get the public releases. But again, the RC build is likely going to be the same as the official build next week. So if you install the RC, you are unlikely to see an update next week when everybody else is getting theirs if they're not on the beta program. Okay, so let's talk about when we can expect to see that iOS 18 release. So Apple has confirmed now that we are going to see iOS 18 on Monday, September 16th, the exact date that we predicted months ago. So we will be seeing that on Monday the 16th, along with it looks like for the first time potentially ever, we could be seeing macOS Sequoia on that same day as well. So next week is going to be very exciting for software updates. But aside from that, as far as 18.1 goes, we're not expecting to see that until sometime in mid to late October, most likely towards the end of October. So that is iOS 18 RC. Again, stay tuned for my big iOS 18 movie that's coming next week where I show off all of the new features and changes. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future iOS 18 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.